Aloha and welcome. Um, we're going to be talking in this section about while loops. We discussed this previously in a general sense. This time we're actually going to go through while uh, loops uh, using Python. So uh, we're going to dig right in. We're going to review just a little bit uh, what we talked about before. A while loop basically is going to execute an indented block of code known as the loop body. And uh, we're going to do that as long as the loop expression holds true. And uh, when that uh, expression is false, we're going to exit at the bottom of the loop body and start executing from the next line. So um, each time we go through this, it's called an iteration. And we call the process of going through these loops uh, iterating. So we're iterating over a bunch of statements, essentially. So um, there's one thing that I want to point out before we start uh, going through this. It's something we're going to learn in a later lesson. I actually kind of just moved it into here, but we're going to be using shorthand operators. And the reason we're doing that is because it's very well suited to the, um, the loops that we're going to be doing. So what is a shorthand operator? Let's take a look at VS Code real quick. So let me share my screen. So we have right here, I've got a little bit of the explanation here at the top. A shorthand operator is when we, colla uh, when we collapse a common operation uh, into a shorter syntax. So the way we do that is, let's say we have x equals x plus 1. All we're doing is we're adding 1 to uh, x. Uh, we can shorten that statement to x plus equals 1. So all that means is x equals x plus 1. We're uh, shortening it into x plus equals one. And this is going to work for a number of different types of operations. You can do it for addition. You can do it for subtraction, multiplication, and division. So you can do x minus equals one. You can do x times equals one. You can do x divided equals one. And it's going to uh, work just as you expect. The x equals x divided by one if it's uh, x divided uh, equals one. So I'm pointing that out because here in loops, we do a lot of incrementing or decrementing by one or some other number. So it's just easier to use the shorthand method. And I thought I'd show it to you first before we started doing all of that. So let's take a little example here. And we're going to say, uh, let me uncomment this. We're going to start with x equals 10. And we're going to say that while x is greater than 0, we're going to print x. Then we're going to reduce x by one. We're going to take one away from it. And that, you know, when we do this, we're going to start with 10. So we're going to say, is x greater than zero? Yes, it is. So we're going to print 10. And then we're going to take one off of that. We're going to have x equals nine after that x minus equals one. So we're going to go back up. We're going to say, uh, is x greater than 10? Yes, it's nine. So nine is uh, definitely greater than zero. So we're going to go and we're going to print nine. Then we're going to hit x minus equals 1. So now we have a situation where x equals 8. We go back up. We reevaluate. Is x greater than 0? Uh, yes, 8 is greater than 0. So we're going to keep on doing it. So we're going to do this over and over, de uh, decrementing x by 1 each single time until we no longer have the situation true that uh, you know x is greater than 0. So if we try running this and we go here, we'll see that it starts out with 10, then it goes 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. When it gets to 1, yes, 1 is greater than 0, but then we're going to print it, and then we're going to subtract 1. It's going to be 0. Is 0 greater than 0? No, it is not. So that's the end of it. So we would come out here. There's no other statements except comments. So that's where the execution stops. So that's generally how this is going to work. So we'll comment this out. So uh, as I stated before in the previous lesson, the value that when evaluated exits the loop, it's known as the sentinel value. It's the one that's watching over everything. So um, another feature that's shown in this section is how to repeat text by using some text uh, times the number of times to repeat it. So I've got a little example right here that I'll show. So we'll start with x equals zero, and we're going to go and count uh, down or uh, actually, yeah, we're going to uh, increase, but we're going to say that uh, while x is less than 10, we're going to print a dash, a little hyphen there, but we're going to print it x number of times. So if we start with zero, we're going to have zero times uh, that will print that out. 
but then we'll increment it by one. We'll go up there. We'll say, hey, is X less than 10? You know, and then we're going to, you know, go and we're going to, if it is less than 10, we're going to print it again. So um, we're going to keep on going. And uh, let's try running this and see what results we get. So as you can see, we start out with uh, the situation at the top where X is zero. Is zero less than 10? Yes, it is. So we print it zero times. So we've got nothing but a blank space here. So then we add one to it. We say is one less than 10? Why, yes, it is. So now we do one hyphen. So that's what we have here. So then we go back up there uh, after we increment to two. Is two less than 10? Why, yes, it is. So now we do two hyphens, so one, two. Then we go down here, we increase it by one. So X is three, is three less than 10? Yes, it is. So now we print three hyphens. So we keep on doing this until we get to nine. So we'll have nine down here. Is nine less than 10? Yes. We add one to it uh, after printing and we get 10. 10 is no longer less than 10. So that's where we end up. We're going exiting out down here and we continue to a bunch of statements. So that's how we work the loops in for the while statement. So this brings up one thing and I personally don't like using while statements. While statements can be kind of dangerous. <clears throat> and why are they dangerous? Because let's say you create a situation that never evaluates to false, you will be in what we call an infinite loop. And as I say here, infinite loops are bad, bad, bad. So the danger of using the while statement, one of the reasons I'm wary of using uh, these is you can enter these infinite loops if you aren't careful. So looping continuously until a certain input, uh, input from the user is a good way to loop. But if you're expecting the thing to end on its own, you need to make sure it will. So a common loop error is to misjudge the sentinel value being reached or having it overstep. And this can lead to the loop uh, running indefinitely. And when it runs indefinitely on a computer, that can lead to some very, very interesting behavior. So sometimes, and you'll see this in, uh, like if you're doing web programming and you're in a browser, you can crash the browser. Your browser will become unresponsive because it's into a loop. And usually you don't realize that it's in a loop until several seconds in, but several seconds in is thousands and thousands and thousands of iterations in a loop. So it can really get hung up. So uh, that can sometimes bring down a browser, bring down your computer. So um, you have to be careful that you don't get into these infinite loops. Everybody is gonna get into an infinite loop at some point in your career if you're doing anything interesting. So, um, but just look for it. That's another, you know, like I said, it's one reason why I try to limit my use of while uh, loops. I use something else uh, like for loops for things. And we'll mention that later. But um, I've got a couple examples here of how you can screw up. And uh, because, you know, I've figured out many ways over my years of how to screw up doing this. So the one that I have here is going the wrong way. You're not really paying attention. You start out with 10 and you say, while X is greater than zero, let's add one to X and let's print it and then go back up there. But we forget, oh wait, I'm adding one to it. It's already above 10 and I'm gonna continuously be going up in number. We're never gonna hit the situation where X is less than zero because I was adding instead of subtracting. So this is gonna turn into an infinite loop. And I'll show you what that looks like. So um, we're gonna hit play here. We notice, oh no, it's going forever. So I click into this box and I have to hit control C. And luckily this one breaks pretty easily. It'll allow us to actually break out. So I do a control and hold down C and it allows me to break out. But sometimes if you're in something like a browser, you won't get that kind of a response. You may hang up for quite a while and sometimes yeah, depending on what you're doing, even in a an ID environment like this, you can hang up pretty bad. So you may get to a situation where you have to restart the whole thing. It's a pain. But anyway, luckily, uh, it says here, keyboard interrupt. That's our control C that uh, breaks us out. So that was lucky. We could recover. But then we go in here and we say, OK, yeah, that probably should have been better as a minus one. And then we get, uh, to, you know, 
we get behavior where it actually end. So that's when you're going the wrong way. Then you can, uh, sometimes you can write it in such a way that you never actually get to your uh, value. This is an interesting problem because it will get to its value and that just has to do with the way it rounds numbers eventually. But what we're doing here is we're starting with 10 and I'm saying, well, while X is greater than zero, we're gonna divide our number by two and then we're gonna print it. Then we're gonna go back up and say, hey, is it greater than zero if it is? So if you think about this, you're gonna be getting closer and closer to zero, but you're never actually gonna hit zero because you keep dividing that space by half. So um, at some point though, the accuracy of the floating point value that's produced here is gonna hit the point where it can't distinguish between uh, you know, our value and zero. So. Anyway, if we run this, we'll actually get it to end. But uh, yeah, in general, this is kind of an, yeah, one of those things that won't have an end. But you see what happens is very quickly, it gets into scientific notation here and it just keeps going and going and going quite a while. And then it gets down to the point where it's like, eh, that's close enough, round it, boom, zero. But generally, if you had an accurate, uh, representation of the number in floating point, you wouldn't have it actually hit zero like that. And that would be an infinite loop of sorts. So then the last example I have here of uh, how you can enter an infinite loop is you can accidentally skip over your sentinel value. And this is easier uh, to hit, uh, this is an easier error to have than you would expect. So let's say you start with nine, and you're going to say, hey, while x is not equal to zero, you know, let's, you know, let's decrement, you know, x. And usually you decrement by uh, one, but let's say you're doing something where you need to decrement by two. So you said, hey, x minus equals two. We're going to say it's, you know, essentially x equals x minus two. But then you realize, oh my gosh, I'm starting with an odd number. I'm not going to hit zero, which is even, I'm going to, I'm going to just go right by it. I'm not going to hit my sentinel value there. So this is something where you would probably not be wanting to check equality, but maybe do relational like, you know, less than, you know, while uh, X or while X is greater than or equal to zero, something like that. Because if we hit the play here, let's go ahead and clear this out. But if we were to hit play, you can see what happens. Yeah, we're just going downwards fast because we blew through our number. We just, uh, oops, and it filled our entire screen here. So I can't really go back. Let me, let me clear this out. And I'm gonna run it really quickly and then kill it. So, oh, let's see if I can, oh, it's, it's just way too fast. I, I can't really see it, but uh, yeah, it just blows through here. But uh, what's happened is it goes, nine to seven to uh, to five to th uh, three to, to one, and then it goes to negative one. So it never actually hits zero. It just goes right through it. And that's the problem. If we had said something like uh, while X is uh, greater than zero, that would have worked. So then we would only you know go through it. Once it hits the negative one, it kicks out. So, yeah, but this is why in general, I don't like using while for uh, these types of things. It's just a, it, it has that risk that if you don't structure it properly, you may hit an infinite loop, but they do have their use. You know, it, for example, if you're uh, taking in input values from a, a user, it's nice to be able to just loop until they enter that sentinel value, like, you know, zero or something like that, and it kicks you out. So um, it, it does... Yeah, it does have a use, but uh, for me personally, I try to limit it just so I don't uh, run into a situation where I could hit that infinite loop. So anyways, uh, we'll be continuing on from here. So uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.